Are we here at uh, HP and uh, who are you? My name is Keith Hartsfield. I'm responsible for the mobility products at HP. That means two-in-ones, tablets, uh, phablets, and what, whatever comes after that in smaller devices. So in the last two or three years, HP has been doing more and more in that kind of area, right? We have. We launched the Elite X2 uh, 1012 in November. We're ramping through production now, a lot of demand there. Um, fantastic two-in-one product. And now, today we've announced the HP Elite X3, which we think is the next generation in computing. What it's not is just a Windows phone. What it is, is we think the future. We think this is a brand new category and the first offering in that new category. That's fantastic. So Microsoft did one before, and now HP is the first non-Microsoft doing Continuum, right? Yeah, so while they both run Continuum, I think there's a big difference in the in the complexity of the offer or the richness of the offer that we have. So there's four key things that we bring to market with the HP Elite X3. And uh, but, four, four key things? Yeah. yeah, the first one is a killer device, and I'll tell you more about that at the end, because I know that's the easiest thing to talk about. Yeah. We'll come back to that, because the other three things are very important also. So one of the things that we do is we enable... Um, next generation computing experiences. So on the desktop, we have what we call the desk dock. We put a lot of yeah. thought and care into designing the device. It, it's a very nice looking device with the chrome and the and the charcoal colors. This one, so uh, right here is all the yeah. connectors on the back. Yeah, on the back, you have USB-A for enterprise continuity. Is it USB 2 speed? Uh, these are USB... Yeah. I need to check for you. John, USB 2 or USB 3? So I think it's 2. USB Here it's USB 2. USB Here it's USB 2. And this uh, is USB-C, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Here. Display port for the monitor. Ethernet for high quality LAN and VPN. <laughs> and on the side... Is it gigabit? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And what is the this is a lock for the side. This is just power in. Power in. Oh, yeah. Nice. So we you have only one version of the dock, or you'll have an HDMI we version. We have. We have only one version of the dock for now. Right. Um, we put a lot of care into how we designed it as well. So the angle of the device, the X3 sits inside the dock, is such that when you're sitting down, you can have a good collaboration experience. It's very heavy in weight, so that when you touch it, it doesn't tip over, even if you're touching the top. Nice. And on the bottom, there's micro suction to let it stay put. Okay? okay? So from a desktop computing experience, imagine you have one of these at your house and one of these in your office. And so when you leave the house, your briefcase is now not your briefcase, it's your pocket. So let's, uh, let's uh, so the keyboard mouse is connected right now? With this and, device, yeah. Should be. And can we try to use it a little bit over there? You can. Yeah. What, one comment. Yeah. Although we're announcing it now, and I'll tell you why we're doing this early in a minute, we're shipping in the summertime. Ah, so, so this is fair early. warning. It's very early. The software is very immature. I'm happy to let you try as long as you recognize that it's very early. So what's the CPU? The CPU. Snapdragon 820. 820. With that's the new 820. The new 820. We are the first Windows 10 device that's on Snapdragon 820. That's why there needs to be a lot of software optimization. 820, that's that's that's, that's the most chipsets. powerful ARM processor ever, or what? Correct. Is it? Correct. Is it yeah. is it faster than uh, high silicon, uh, Kirin, or is like the fastest? Absolutely, it's on 14 nanometer fin-fed process. It's up to 60 percent faster and 40 percent more power efficient than the previous generation A10. And Whoa. of course, we think there's going to be less thermal issues as well. So, but we're still very much optimizing because uh, we are the first Windows 10 device on Snapdragon 820. The thermal issues was just a, a trick by Samsung to get Qualcomm to be fabbed at their Samsung. Nope. Samsung is making the chip, I will right? not comment on that one. <laughs> yeah? I'm just, yeah. I, I think the benefit of going to the 14 nanometer FinFET process is you just generate a lot less heat, right? The physics are just better. Right, that's why we'll see the better the better performance on the on the new chip. So the other things about the device, um, while we're talking about the device, yeah. we have a 5.96 inch AMOLED display. 5.96, so that's nearly Super six AMOLED. inch. Yeah, nearly six inch what's AMOLED the, display. What's the resolution? 2K, QHD, 2560 by 1440. That's beautiful resolution, beautiful display. Yes. This is a high yeah, end so OLED see. display with max brightness at 550 nits, best in class. So it's the best display in the world or what? I wouldn't say that, but it's one of the best. And the reason that we actually have it, the brightness so high, is we're really designing for the enterprise customer, not your everyday consumer. And so they've asked us, 
oh, we need to see this in the field in bright sunlight. And so we need the brightness to be really, really high. And you know, with OLEDs, it's the brightest display, really crisp blacks. And yeah, that's very important to have sunlight readability, outdoor yes. We also use. have anti-glare coating to help with that. But as I said, you know, I think Keith has alluded to that is, we're not building this for the consumer. We're really focusing on what HP knows best, which is the enterprise customer. And you know, we still think people say Windows Phone is dying, but we still think it's really relevant for the enterprise customer because all their backend is on Windows. They've been dealing with iOS and Android uh, with BYOD, but there's a lot of security issues, there's a lot of you know manageability issues, and with this, with Windows 10, allows you to be you know single sign-on with Active Directory. So there's lots of benefits to enterprise customers, but the way we built this is not out of vacuum, but HP went and talked to one our top enterprise customers and asked them, hey, are you happy with your iPhone or Galaxy? Is there some unmet need? Are there some pain points that you're feeling? So we listened to them and we translated it into our product requirements and this is how we built the device. This is a really big deal. It's, a, it's a, like the most advanced arm powered Windows ever, right? Correct. Yeah. Like this is a full Windows or is it a full Windows? It's Windows 10 Mobile. Windows 10 Mobile. But so, it is but, ARM based, it's not x86. But is it going to be proofs. able to have all kinds of apps and everything? Yes, yes. So let me yeah. talk a little more. The performance itself, the 820 gives you great horsepower. We have 4 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM. 4 gigs of RAM. 4 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM. So that's not like. So a lot RAM. of really fast, fast RAM. Yeah. To keep up with the Ferrari processor, the A20, right? Um, we have 64 gigs of built-in memory, extensible to two terabytes. Extensible? What does that mean? Micro extensible. SD micro SD, SD slot. Only one slot? Or did so you we have a dual SIM bit. slot. So really? you could have two SIMs, two nano SIMs, or one SIM and one micro SD slot. That's cool. SD card. But not two micro SD. No, not. No, that's, no. I'd like to have a RAID micro SD device. Maybe the next one. I'm joking. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, so this right. is, this is so, a high-end stuff. A lot of high-end stuff, right? The security John mentioned, a lot of good stuff built in. There's also an iris camera on the front. What is it, iris? What? An iris recognition camera on the front. And on the back, we'll have a fingerprint reader just below the camera. Which is, is that the fast good. and good fingerprint? It will be similar to the ones like on Nexus. It will be the instant touch, not this way. Not as good as uh, the latest Huawei? Yes, yes. It's yeah. actually better than that. It's better? How? Yeah. Because we're coming out a little bit later, and so we're actually getting the best latest sensor, finger sensor module from our Is it like 2,000 DPI everything or something like that? Uh, probably better. Uh, yeah. So, uh, the, and the iris, uh, how reliable is that? Is that you just uh, put your eye in, in front of the phone and what? And then you log yeah. in? Yeah, well you train it, right? You can you can hold it up and, and train it a number of different As ways. Distance, that distance, you don't need to hold it up in the eye, right? It's, it's kind of here. There? Yeah. Yes. Wow. Something like that. And it finds your eye and it just scans it. Yep. It's, it's very similar to the feature in the Windows Lumia 950, uh, based on the Windows Hello framework. But I think the reason that we decided to add the fingerprint scanner is we talked to a lot of our enterprise customers and they say, Iris is great, but that's like way ahead of me and we're actually doing fingerprint now. And so they asked us. So the problem was that there was no fingerprint reader enabled on a Windows phone before. So we had to go talk to Microsoft and this is what our customer really needs for biometric authentication. So now we have dual biometric authentication. Okay. All right. So, the other thing that's really, you know, it's built for business, right? So this device is IP67, so there's that's done with internally sealed ports on the audio and the USB-C, so no garage doors to keep the IP67 on the device, so internally sealed ports. So that means uh, it can go in the water and stay in the water a little yeah, bit? Yeah, one, one point some meters for 30 minutes. Yeah, wow. so it, we're not intending to take it scuba diving but it'll help you if you drop it in the sink or take it in the rain, okay? Is there anything you have done about the shockproof? So this is this because will be designed to and test, tested to and designed to pass MilSpec A10G standards, which includes shockproof and drop and a four foot drop spell. So it's gonna be, uh, it's not gonna shatter as much as some iPhones Correct. and stuff? Correct, yeah. so also Gorilla Glass 4 on the front. Um, but the most impressive thing about the uh, ruggedness of this device, I think, is inside this 7.8 millimeter thin package, we managed to fit a 4,150 milliamp hour battery. 4,150. That's, uh, that's, that sounds like it's more than one day. How long is it gonna it's be? Huge. Well, we'll find out when the software gets more mature. 
We're literally just finishing the driver work now, so we can't really even test anything about batteries. So you are a very good partner with Microsoft in this, right? Microsoft and Qualcomm. You'll see in the announcement we have um, Satya from Microsoft, we have uh, Malenkov from Qualcomm, we have Dion Weisler from our, our company, HP. We also have uh, Mark Benioff from Salesforce, their CEO. Oh, he's, they're also interested, they're, they're also, also excited they're also about this They're also excited about this because they see when you go to a mobile first workplace, you can see that their application, which will be a universal mm -hmm. app and pre-installed, will allow them to, to take a mobile first approach with their customers and our common customers. All right, so Windows right. 10 mobile. It's going to be, uh, how, uh, how much better is it going to be the, compared to Windows Whoa. 8 phone? Uh, how, what, there's a bunch of new stuff happening, right? Well, so here's, here's a leading indi indicator I'll give you. I think there's a lot of pent-up demand to get away from Windows 7. So there's so two, 200 million installed seats already on Windows 10. And there's 76% of enterprise are actively doing trials on Windows 10, which is a really tremendous, for me, leading indicator on a Windows 10 so mobile Paul platform. Paul Microsoft to really right? It means that the enterprises will move there and this will be a natural fit for them with a common experience. There's also four That's gigabytes awesome. of LPGDR4. So the display right? port uh, oh, goes okay. to an HDMI or how does it work? No, well, this it doesn't need to display port monitor. Only display port monitors. For not now. HD, no HDMI so monitors. monitors. For now. This, uh, but you could just have a different dock or I think I think we'll find out in the future. Right now the, the dock is designed to be display port. Some of the adapters will work for HDMI, but we need to figure out as we get closer to launch, how many will be compatible. And the best way to do a dock is one that fits only one phone, one design of a phone? Oh, it actually doesn't fit only one design. Next so, type reader, pin entry device, scanners, all these kind of things. Right, so this one, oh. the other thing I didn't tell you about the device yet, is on the back we have pogo pins that allow you to have power in, power out on a USB. So we, we as HP will also address the vertical markets like retail and rugged field service and healthcare. So you can put smart jackets around this device. So think about retail where you have an integrated barcode scanner and a payment device and you could drop it in a dock and have a, a cash register experience. But when you when it's busy in the store you can pull it out and do queue busting and take payments remotely. Is this right? the first phone in the world with pogo pins in the back like this? I don't know if it's the Is first device with pogo pins, but I think it, it, integrating what we've done from a seamless experience and supporting the verticals is probably the first, yes. So what I'd like to see, uh, do you think it would be possible, is to have a back case that would be an e-ink display. Ah, interesting. I will, I will write that down. Like, you can have all kinds of stuff happening here, right? Right, right. So you're talking about POS, yeah. point of sale? You're talking IP about... did that. Yeah, no, have you... A company, a Russian company, launched a phone like that. Yeah, yeah. phones. Yeah. yeah. So you the, can do all kinds phone. of things with the Google yeah. pins in the back. And, uh, yeah, it's very, it's an extensible design. And the, we, we designed the dock to accommodate, you know, this is this is this this, this top is designed for the the phone without a case, but you can see that we can accommodate much thicker back covers. Nice. So potentially a different phone in the future would just get yes. a different adapter and you keep the button exactly, dock. Exactly. Exactly. So this one just slides on the top. Nice. Uh, what's the price? We we don't have pricing yet. We'll, we'll uh, articulate pricing a lot closer to launch because we're so far ahead of time. Right. I will tell you we'll probably sell these in bundles because a big part of our um, next generation computing proposition is around the experiences you get on the desktop. But there's more I haven't told you about those experiences. In addition to the desktop, we have what's called a mobile extender. Oh no! Really? Show you? Sorry. Is this like an empty laptop? It is like an empty laptop. There's no CPU, it's right? Like, no CPU, but it's thinner and lighter and smaller than a MacBook Air. So it's 13.8 millimeters. Yeah, really? Okay. So it's and it has a 12 and a half inch display inside. Is this a mock-up or is it real? This is real. It does, this firmware doesn't work, so it doesn't turn on, but it's actual, like the weight is correct and the parts are first build off the line. 12 and a half inch display, thin bezel. Enterprise grade keyboard here, as well as the the click pad. And can I can I just uh, see how heavy? So it's going to be super thin, super super good weight. Should be should be under a thousand grams. And uh, what are we looking at the ports? Okay, on the ports, you have USB C's on this side for auxiliary devices. You have a, a battery button to check the battery because you can use this wirelessly. So if you leave your, your X3 in your coat or in your bag, you can connect to this wire, wirelessly with a 2x2 AC modem. So, uh, wirelessly, so that means you, you don't have to dock it, you can just do like a Miracast or, yeah, to it. 
to it. Yeah. If you want to, like the battery is so big on here, we designed it to last from a, a, on a flight from like Sam, uh, San Francisco to Amsterdam. So you have a 48 watt hour battery, which is 20 percent bigger than in our Elite, Elite X2. This has BNO. It has tremendous BNO design? sound. Yeah, yeah, Bang & Olufsen. So you have good sound. Fantastic sound on here, right? This so is you have a big battery, and if if, if you do want to charge. Yeah. There's, you can you can plug the X3 in here through the USB-C, and you can use a wired experience and charge the device. So There's I, also a micro HDMI port out. Yeah. So if you're in a conference room and they don't have wireless uh, presentation capabilities, you can also use that. This is beautiful. It's amazing. It's awesome. So are you envisioning that Enterprise is going to buy uh, a phone for each of their employees, and then a, a dock, and then they dock, they go to the office, they, and uh, they go home, and they have everything? I, yes, I think the bundles of, of the X3 plus some of the other enabling accessories will be very, very popular, including displays, keyboard mice, and all the other things that we bring to market. There's one more really important thing that I haven't talked about yet, which is important for commercial. You know, in the average enterprise, you have 500 to 3,000 bespoke applications written on x86. So one of the really novel things that we've done on the X3 platform is we have a service called HP Workspace, which allows you, in a very turnkey way, to have a virtualized experience for all those applications. And there's a demo that we can show you. Uh, it's, so it's actually, uh, it's, it's virtualizing, it's virtualization of... Yeah, it's doing virtualization of the applications as long as you have an internet connection. Right, so the, the virtualization yeah. engine will run here and take and take it from the cloud. So right. this, that means all the Windows apps just work over the web? X86 apps will work, yes. All of them? And you can support multiple Windows at the same time. Is this a product you already have or you, you're launching later with We're this? We're launching it with this. We're launching it with this. So it's something you're working on too? To have? Yes, yeah. Uh, and we can get a demo for you in a moment. But if you think about what's important about this is, yes, we have a great device. It's a killer device. We have the docking solutions between the mobile extender and the desktop to give you mobile computer, you know, mobile network, mobile notebook replacement, sorry I'm getting tired, yeah. or a desktop replacement. You have virtualization for your x86 apps, and then the way we'll take it to market is we're number one in commercial computing. We ship a, a commercial de device every, every second of every day, so we have intimate knowledge of what the enterprise needs are, and we have reach into 170 countries like no one else does to supply the devices and all the back-end services and support. This right, is fantastic. So, so this is the future of the laptop, basically, and the desktop. We think, we think this is the future of computing, much like, you know, you went from 8-track cassettes to cassettes to, to Discman, to MP3, to Spotify and Pandora. We think the same transition is going to happen in computing. Right, and we think the future is going to look a lot more like this. This is the first step, the first product in a brand new category of computing. And this is really designed for highly mobile people. You'll see us evolve that over time to go deeper and broader in the offerings. That Could we you do all this with Android too, or no? I don't think you can. Not do it really all with yet. Android. No, because the the x86 apps and the this, the the Azure uh, Active Directory logon that enterprises use, it's not the it's not the tool of choice. Windows is the incumbent that I think plays to our strengths, and that's where we're going to start. But you do a lot of uh, Android devices in your segment, right? We do some Android devices. We do a lot of Windows devices. We also have a lot of Windows devices. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. So that's cool. So thanks a lot for sharing this, and uh, looking pleasure. forward to uh, this being the future. All right. Thank you very much.